What if the armies of the Lord picked up and dusted off? Well, hey guys, uh, Jason here, one of the pastors at North Park Church here in Columbus, Nebraska, and super grateful once again to be bringing you your life group lesson. And we are um, still in our War Room series, still digging into Jesus' words from Matthew 6 on prayer. And in fact, this week, we are still focused on his pardon, just another aspect of his pardon. Um, so we've talked about um, forgiveness too easy, forgiveness too difficult. Today, we're going to talk about the temptation to make forgiveness too religious, the temptation just to to go through the motions in kind of a, a legalistic way and not really forgive genuinely from the heart. So settle in, uh, get ready for a good time, and our key verses are from Matthew chapter 5, verses 21 through 24. And just like always, I'm going to go ahead and read through those verses right now. You guys follow along in your Bibles, follow along in the, on your outline, and then we will dig into some study questions. Okay, again, Matthew 5. Verses 21 through 24. You've heard it said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who's angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So, if you're offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Okay, so some great verses there, some great instruction on the difference between authentic forgiveness and religious forgiveness going through the motions. So, so getting into our discussion questions here. Question one, what does it look like to forgive religiously? Dig into those verses, pray about it, what can you pull out of what we just read that would answer, what does it look like to forgive religiously? Go ahead and talk about that now. Okay, so um, really, in, in a nutshell, forgiving religiously means that you're going through the motions just upholding some law and considering that religion, er, forgiveness. When Jesus is saying, forgiveness really happens in your heart. You know, you've, you've heard it said, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But then Jesus amps it up, and he says, anyone who's angry with his brother is liable to judgment. So he, he's saying, you know, just because you have not gone so far as to murder the person that you are angry with, has nothing to do with whether or not you are actually willing to forgive them because it, it happens in your heart. So religious forgiveness is just going through the motions or upholding some law. So moving on to question two, let's just focus it a little bit more as we do. Question two, verse 22 in our key scriptures makes it very clear that there are grave consequences to calling somebody a fool. And that is a huge understatement. Grave consequences is a huge understatement. What is so serious about this as to warrant such a warning? Read verse 22. Obviously, uh, it's serious business to call somebody a fool. Why so serious? Pray about that. Talk about that now. Okay, well, there's a lot in there, and hopefully you guys pulled some good stuff out of there. I, I mean, you, you know, it's plain to see that there are eternal consequences. You're, you're liable to the hell of fire if you do this. But, but obviously, once again, um, you know, it, we all, in our minds, in our hearts, probably out loud, um, call people a fool or something similar on a daily basis. Now, that doesn't mean if somebody's sitting next to me and I say, oh, you fool, that that is going to send me to hell. What is going to send me to hell is, is the heart behind it. So there are eternal consequences to having a heart that, that believes that it is in a position to make those sort of judgment calls, if, if that makes sense. The, the reason that this is so serious is because it's indicative 
of a type of, of arrogance or superiority that has eternal consequences. Uh, it, in order to call somebody a name like that, to make that sort of judgment, uh, you, whether you realize it or not, are putting yourself on an elevated level, an elevated plane. You're automatically thinking that you have some sort of right to make these judgment calls with another person. And that, uh, that is a grave issue. So moving on to question three, um, this is interesting to me. It, 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 uh, it really caught my attention right off the bat that the word brother is used four times in these four verses. And every word is important in Scripture. We know this. So what, if anything, might the significance of that be? Pray about it. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Uh, that, that word, they, they just drive that home, brother, four times in, in four verses. What, if anything, might the significance of that be? Talk about it now. Okay, you know, it, it really dawns on me that um, the people that, that we need to forgive the most, the people that uh, we tend to, to most easily um, sin against or, or even feel sinned against from are people that are close to us. That really jumps out at me. Uh, not to say that, you know, it's not easy to uh, become angry with somebody just driving down the road, but the truth of the matter is that's on a, a whole different level than needing forgiveness from or needing to forgive uh, somebody that's right next to you, somebody that's in your family, um, somebody that's at church with you, somebody that you work with. It's, it's the people that are, that are right next to you that mean the most, that you mean, that you mean the most to, that uh, tend to, you know, warrant this lesson. So that really jumps out at me. So we're going to get a little personal now with question four. What negative results have you seen your anger produce? Pray about that. Uh, hopefully you're willing to kind of put some stuff on the table there. Um, try to avoid speaking about things from months, years ago. You, you know, there's, there's nothing too, uh, too dangerous about uh, discussing problems, discussing um, consequences that your anger might have produced when you were a completely different person years ago. So let's try to keep it current and talk about the negative results that you've seen your anger produce. I mean, as current as you possibly can. Pray about that. Talk about that now. All right, and then to bring it on, on home, question five, we've got some instruction in these verses, some great instruction on what genuine forgiveness actually looks like as opposed to just religiously going through the motions. Verses 23 and 24 give us instruction on genuine forgiveness. In your own words... What are these verses telling us to do, and how might that look in your life? I, I mean, it, it's got very, very clear instructions, clear instructions for forgiveness from the heart, genuinely. Um, but obviously, we, in this day and age, are not going to show up offering some sort of, of gift literally at an altar, literally. So, what might that look like in your life? This instruction, how does that play out in our lives today, in your life specifically? Pray about that. Talk about that. That is the end of our lesson. I hope you guys have had a great time. Be praying for each other. Be excited for the future. Um, we've got some things, um, some, some things coming, some mission work for our life group. So, so be praying for your groups. Be, be strengthening each other. And, uh, and just really try to keep in mind how blessed we are to have these groups, to have each other, to have this church, and ultimately to be children of God. And I'll see you next week.